Jeez, I gotta see an actual barber. Look at this! I look like Beaker! <laughs> um... I'm 23 years old, and I apologize if I've got a little bit of a lisp today. A dog greeted me uh, with the top of her head on my chin, and I bit my tongue. So, um, the last few months have been a little bit rocky in my mental health journey, so I took a little time off of this to kind of figure all that out and get some stuff under my belt. And um, the only video I could figure out how to make coming back from that is... Uh, why public school failed me and other fun stories. Thanks, Jack. Um, because in thinking about my um, own mental health journey and the things I'm going through and the things I've gone through, um, why not start at the beginning? My very young childhood, not that bad. I don't remember too much of it. It was um, me and my sisters and my parents and we had a nice big backyard and I spent a lot of time out in the dirt out there. Um, and I learned how to read very quickly, I learned how to write very quickly. It, elementary school was very easy, I, I learned quickly, everyone was impressed by how well I did. Um, middle school came along and things along the lines of, you know, who I am as a person started to come in, who I wanted to be as a person. Um, I didn't have any way to figure out the gender feelings that I was going through. Um, I didn't know. I've always been, I was always kind of a tomboy growing up, um, and I thought that was it. I was just a tomboy. Um, I thought I'd always be uncomfortable in my skin. I didn't have any words for it. Um, and middle school kind of got, is when it started to go downhill because I was starting to go into puberty and all that stuff was, it wasn't the right pu puberty, so it was pretty traumatizing to go to, go through. Because reading and writing and all that stuff kind of came easy to me, I didn't learn how to study or um, I didn't learn how to study the way that the teachers were presenting to me. I had potential. Everyone kept telling me, you have potential. I don't understand why you're not excelling in these classes, um, especially as I started getting through to seventh grade and eighth grade. And, and I knew I had potential. I know I'm smart. I know I can read very well. Um, I could tear through a book in an afternoon. I used to read. Um, I used to go through the library, I would just pick up a book and bring it home and return it the next day and pick up another book and bring it home and return it the next day. It was the best. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't handle classes. I couldn't handle sitting in a room, focusing on a class, learning what the teacher told me, and then being able to regurgitate it for a test later. And um, for most of the, my schooling, uh, that was my fault and I had to work harder to get better at it. So I started to get more and more depressed and feeling more and more like a failure because I wasn't um, making these um, goals and standards that the schools were setting out for me, that my parents were setting out for me. Um, and I didn't know why. I was trying as hard as I could. Um, I did as much learning as I could. I sat down with my books as best as I could focus on and nothing was working. Um, also, I was having a lot of trans brain mush, which is actually the words I wrote down. <laughs> so I didn't know what was going on with my body. The puberty was coming and it wasn't right and things were bad. And um, in middle school was also the beginning of um, when lockdowns were happening. So um, I went, when did I go into middle school? Like 2005, 2006 is um, when like lockdown practices and drills started to happen and um, we would just be in class and a drill would happen and we'd get under the tables and prepare. So that was very scary, just going to school knowing that there would be a possible lockdown. Um, and more and more happened about that in high school and luckily I've been out of school for long enough. Not sure what it's like right now, but from what I've heard it's as bad and worse and it's disgusting, I hate it so much. Um, Schools shouldn't be a scary place to go to. So high school started happening and um, I had a small group of close friends. I had a bunch of people who were acquaintances. Um, I was in the drama, prob drama club pretty heavily and the drama club traumatized me just straight out. The uh, person running it was awful um, and abusive and like emotionally to the students um, it was a stressful environment it was really 
not fun. And I did it for four years, and I was the president of the club my senior year, and I was in charge of a whole bunch of it my senior year, and um, I have nightmares about it still. <laughs> I've been out of college, or been out of high school since 2013. It's been six years and I still have nightmares about being a drama club. So that was very traumatizing for me. Um, my mental illness got worse because I kept, uh, every year my grades would just get lower and lower because I couldn't figure out how to keep up with um, my schoolwork, with my classes, uh, with my homework, tests, studying, anything. So my grades just kept dropping. So junior year and senior year they're prepping you for colleges and at this point I'm so lost because I've been just trying to pass classes that I have no idea what I want to do for colleges. I have not had any time to think about that because I've been trying to pass classes and um, so I was like okay well the only thing I do is theater so let's get into a theater college that'll be fine. I remember sitting in the office with my uh, counselor and she was just reading names off of a list, college names off of a list and just applying me to them. I remember sitting on the floor while my mom was just applying me for colleges. None of it really felt like it was my choice it just felt like that was the next step I had to take. So if you're in high school right now and you're thinking about college and you're worried about it it's totally fine. Take, take some time off because it's it, you don't have to do it if you're not super sure about it. Graduation happens, I've gotten into this college and the college is great because I got into like this design tech program which was really cool because I really, it was like there was the big theater program and then there was like the, the um, technical um, like scenic design and costume design stuff and then there was like 12 or 20 students in the design tech program um, <clears throat> with me. Um, I remember I only went for one half a half semester, but I remember like the first night there when they did like the freshman orientation and everyone's on stage and it was great. And um, they had the freshmen in the design tech program stay behind and help um, strike the set and take it all down. And I just remember people yelling at me. People, they were like, "We're gonna slam two by fours on your toes to make sure you got um, steel toe boots on." Um, I was like, this is my first day at college. <laughs> like, this is not welcoming to me at all. I do not like this. Um, it was 100% not what I wanted to do, and so it it just completely turned me away from college and learning. Um, I think I withdrew from college before I could fail, but it really wasn't it wasn't a good time for me. I've recently been diagnosed with ADHD, um, which is like, oh wow. <laughs> Now I know why I couldn't figure out how to learn, because I never learned how to study with an ADHD brain. I was expected to learn with a neurotypical brain, with, with or whatever brain that they set out um, <laughs> thinking about when they first started making SAT and, and, and MCAS and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so I learned differently and I was stuck in classes with 20, 30 people. and. Um, kind of just felt lost in the crowd and expected to be pushed along. I did not have any help and support academically at all in high school, which makes it me really nervous to go back to college, even if it would be um, beneficial for my future. It's very scary. Uh, I needed to learn how to study as an adult on my own, and no one taught me that so now I'm trying to figure all that stuff out. I make lists, I write everything down so I don't forget about it, and check everything off as I've done it so I know that I've done it. Did I take my pills this morning? Yes I did. You know how I did? No I did, because I wrote it down on my list and I checked it off right after I did it. So what can we learn from this? What can we take from my awful learning experience and how can we fix that for other generations so they can not go through the same thing that I did. So um, teachers, um, teachers need to be paid better, teachers need to be supported better, we need to have teachers, more teachers. Um, there's a, there's so many students going through the school system, like one teacher to 30 kids is not a good learning environment. You're not going to be able to um, feel connected to how you're learning, you're not going to be able to understand it as um, best as you can and you'll be able to zone out and um, kind of fl float by, which is what I felt like I was doing in high school. Um, and in order to get better teachers we need to be able to um, create safe environments, safe working environments for them. Counselors. Um, every school counselor that was in my um, 
school school district was very focused on making sure the students passed and went to college and that was from what I saw their only focus if you went into the counselor's office it's because you weren't passing and you needed to pass so you could go to college or you were going into the counselor's office to talk about college that's all I saw none of them had any sort of mental health training or anything their entire job was to crank out good grades and put kids into college so we need to um, actually support the students with mental health counselors that they can go to and feel safe going to. School districts are set up in ways to um, keep low-income families in low-income environments and um, families of um, mi uh, minorities, people of color. Um, school divisions were set up to segregate and um, keep you know, predominantly white schools together and predominantly black schools together, uh, which is racist, first of all. So we need to fund all schools the same. Every student should be able to go into a school as equally as every other student. Every child should be able to start um, learning um, and get um, the same head start on life as every other child in this country. Um, it shouldn't be because you are a different color or um, if you don't have enough money, you don't get the right um, education because then you're screwed for life. So the whole school system needs to level out and that's, it's just money, unfortunately. And then how can we support the students? <sighs> Sorry kids, the school system sucks right now. You guys are all like, it's scary to go to school, it's scary to be at school, it's scary to pee at school. Um, it's scary to move schools and be the new kid and everything about being a teenager is hard. There's nothing easy about being a teenager um, and throwing you into just like a, a, a cesspool of other kids is not a, very good for your mental health. So to support our students, let's give them good teachers, let's give them a well-funded school system, let's give them counselors that actually help with their mental health. You can't learn about the world from a book. You need to learn about the world from the world. So all I can do to fix this problem right now is to um, offer these videos and share my story and my experience and hope it reaches people who are going through the same things. So you don't feel alone, and so you'll get an education, at least. Um, you got it, stick through it. This is Steven. <laughs> like, hey, he's my kitty. He's my kitty. It's something that we need to stop and think about, and um, Jack, shut your butt. I'm trying to do some work. Come here. Get up here. Come here. Get over here.